a doomed romance between two lovers in Victorian-era Scotland. The circumstances surrounding the death of Pierre-Emile Langelier pointed fingers towards Madeleine Smith, a Glaswegian socialite. Despite circumstantial evidence clearly framing her as the murderer, the trial would go on to become a sensational media storm for the ages. Tonight on Dark Curiosities, the murder of Pierre-Emile Langelier. Pierre-Emile Langelier was born in Jersey, one of the Channel Islands, on the 30th of April, 1823. Whilst living in Glasgow and working as a clerk and apprentice nurseryman, he pretended to be a Frenchman and often boasted of having noble blood. Emile, as he was commonly known, was quite the charmer. However, it was said by many who knew him that when women had threatened to break up with him, he would threaten them by saying he would poison himself if they left, making these women feel unnecessarily guilty. It was February in 1855 in Socky Hall Street in Glasgow when he first met 20-year-old Madeline Smith. Emile was with a friend and both had a habit of picking up rich women, accidentally on purpose knocking into them to begin a conversation. This event led to a single red rose being delivered to Madeline at the Smith residence on Valentine's Day, their romance blossoming into imminent disaster. Madeline Hamilton Smith was 10 years Longelier's junior and was the firstborn of five children to James Smith, a wealthy architect, and Elizabeth, who was the daughter of neoclassical architect David Hamilton. Madeline was born on the 30th of March, 1835, and the family resided at 7 Blythswood Square and also owned country lodgings near Helensborough and a holiday house in Rue. She was educated in England, and apparently she despised the city of Glasgow. She was a very sociable young woman who attended many parties and balls, her relationship with Emile brought a fresh thrill to her life. Madeline began writing letters to Emile, and he would also correspond, the pair often meeting secretively at Madeline's window in the middle of the night. To avoid detection, Madeline would get her servants to pass the letters on to Langelier, who kept almost every single one. The contents of these letters were very detailed and bursting with passion and burning desire. In one of the letters, Madeline seems to confirm that she lost her virginity to Emile. Of course, in Victorian Britain, affairs such as this were scandalous and, if brought to light, would bring a dark cloud, hanging shamefully above the families involved for the remainder of their lives. Madeline's sister also knew of the affair but kept it to herself. Their relationship, however, was fastly becoming a sinking ship. Although the couple discussed marriage, Madeline insisted it could never happen because of her social standing and the fact it would lose her support of friends and family as well as money. Eventually, after pursuing her for months, Emile received the answer he always wanted. Madeline accepted his marriage proposal and they became engaged. Smith's father, James, then introduced her to a man called William Harper Minnock, a neighbour, William was more her age and was also enormously wealthy, and James soon suggested that the pair should wed. Madeline communicated once again with Emile, once more insisting that despite her love for him, their relationship could never work, and she subsequently insisted on them parting ways. Emile was upset about this and gave a message of reply, saying despite everything, he will always love her and will never accept their separation, and that he would never let her go. She continued her relationship with Emile while also courting William, and in January of 1857, Madeline and William's engagement was announced. Emile was distraught by this and threatened to go to Madeline's father in order to expose their secret forbidden romance. This is what tipped Madeline over the edge. She could not have her reputation tarnished, and she would also sacrifice her betrothal to Minnock. In Victorian Britain, a situation like this was every reputable person's nightmare. Several times following, Madeline went out and bought arsenic, signing the poison register under the name M.H. Smith. 
She said to the shopkeeper that the poison was required to kill vermin. However, it seemed that murder was on her mind. It was around this time Pierre-Emile Langelier began to fall ill. According to his friends, Emile suspected he was being poisoned. However, some believed he was possibly lying in order to send authorities on Madeleine's trail, his possible revenge on her for abandoning him. It was reported that in his final days, Longelier was a deathly yellow colour and was sick for hours on end. Pierre-Emile Longelier passed away in the early hours of the 23rd of March 1857 and was buried at Ramshorn Cemetery in Ingram Street in Glasgow. Following his slow and painful death, police found piles of Madeleine's letters and she was then arrested and charged with his murder following the discovery of arsenic in her home. The trial of Madeleine Smith lasted all but nine days. Stakes were high, and if found guilty, Madeleine Smith would be sentenced to death by hanging. A toxicology report displayed evidence that the victim had died due to arsenic poisoning, with 86 grains found in the post-mortem. Despite this, and proof of having the poison in her possession, Madeleine Smith was sensationally set free, with the jury providing a not proven verdict. The jury believed she was guilty of murder, however the prosecution had very little evidence to the contrary. Nobody had witnessed them together in the weeks leading up to Langelier's demise, and this ultimately swayed the jury to their controversial decision. The trial of Madeleine Smith and the death of Emile Langelier became notorious and Smith was forced to leave Scotland. She lived in London and on the 4th of July 1861 married an artist, George Wardle, and the couple welcomed two children, Thomas and Mary, who was also known as Kitten. Despite using her married name, some folk indeed knew her true identity. Her marriage failed around 1889 and then she moved to New York City. She married for a second time in 1916 to William A. Shee. She became a widow in 1926 and died in 1928. Madeline Hamilton Smith was buried under the name Lena Wardle Shee. The death of Longelier and the sensational trial that followed made Madeline Smith one of the most famous women in Scottish criminal history. Many debate on whether she was guilty or if perhaps Emile had planned it all along. What is definite, however, is that they were two lovers destined to never be, a Victorian romance doomed from the moment they met on that February afternoon in the city of Glasgow.